is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro. And so we just set up a remote backend, or sorry, a standard backend with S3. Um, but that was just for a single uh, workspace. So imagine if we wanted to set up uh, this for multiple workspaces. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new bucket. And by the way, we're not going to go and create a bunch of AWS accounts because I, I realize that's a lot of work for some people. But uh, what you, I want you to do is go and create that bucket. Um, so just make sure it is named the same here. And since we're using the same project, we might have to do like a Terraform init on this or even a migrate. Um, so this looks like, oh, sorry, I'm uh, initializing the wrong directory here. We got to go into 120. That's the one mine is called here. And we'll do a Terraform init here. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's the wrong <laughs> workflow. It's 130 for me. Having uh, what, like uh, one of those days where I'm a bit forgetful here. But we'll type in Terraform init. And because we had just used it, we'll have to do like a migrate state on it. Okay. And if that's giving us too much trouble, another thing that we can just do is just open this up. Uh, I don't want to find it in a folder. I just want to op uh, reveal that in my Explorer here. Sorry. So we'll go uh, reveal and file Explorer. And I'm going to bring that over. And I, we've deleted these, so we don't have them anymore. So it's not a big deal if we uh, delete them. So say continue. Try again. And really won't let me delete this here. Of course, I have permission. I'm the one who created it. We'll say continue here. Okay, but that's fine. We'll try to do uh, Terraforming it on it now. Maybe it will take now that uh, there's just a modules there. There we go. It's not always easy. Great, and so now what we can do is just do Terraform uh, workspace list to see what workspaces we have. Or it's just workspace. And we do Terraform Workspace New um, Staging. And I do not need to update my GeForce drivers today. And then we can do one for production. And so the idea here is what we need to do, uh, and I have, uh, it's all in the S3 backend here, but I'm just kind of walking you through it. But the idea is what you'd first have to do is set up a variable here. And we, you know, we should probably put this in our variables folder, you know, since that would probably be more proper. And what this is doing is it's saying, okay, the default setting is a map and we have one value called staging or key and one key called production. And this is gonna be pointing to an, a role and this role is going to be in whatever account is doing the provisioning. So you could have one account that is just provisioning both the development or staging and production environments. Um, and so you'd have a user. And so if I went into uh, IAM here and I went to my users, I guess I just have to create a role. So I just create a role. Again, we're not going to go fully do this, but it'd be like another AWS account or third party. We'd have to put the ID in there, uh, and that's the way we would go assume that role. And so once we've created those, we, so we'd be providing the account IDs for each of those uh, and the name of the role there to over to uh, whatever it is. Uh, once we had that, then we can go over to our provider, which is in our main here, and we can just pro provide this assume role here. Okay. And notice over here, it's getting the variable, and then we're passing terraform.workspace. This will select whatever workspace we're in. So for in production, it's gonna pass production in here, and that's gonna go through and select this and assume that role, and we will have permissions to then deploy to that. But things are gonna still be stored in this single uh, bucket, as far as I'm aware of. Um, and so that's one part of it, but one thing that they don't even cover in the actual uh, documentation here is how are you gonna handle your terraform.tfvars? Because this is a file that generally you don't want to be tracking. 
Um, and so what you probably would do is you would create a new file here. So I would just go here and say um, staging.tfvars, right? And then when you want to, you just fill in all your environment variables in there. But when you want to go execute this, uh, when you are in production, you're going to have to do Terraform, uh, apply, and you just do var hyphen file staging uh, tf vars. Okay. And so there's not really an easier way of doing this. It's just pretty much it. And this will, once this, this runs, it will, it will, you know, it will um, work that way. So you probably just make a staging and a production one, and that's just how it would be. You'd have to update your git directory there. So whatever it would be, you'd have to go to dot git ignore. And just you'd ignore everything that had TFRs. Um, I bet that git ignore file that we're using over here probably does a good job of that. If we just scroll up and down, yeah, see it already ignores it there. So that's pretty much how you'd use uh, multiple environments. And again, it's just too much work to set up here and it's not really that important to the certification. So uh, there you go.